when you think you're starting to figure it out, they change the rules of the game. But I'll tell you the funniest thing about us humans. Shockingly, we are survivors. Really, think about it for a second. From sad breakups to split ends to noisy neighbors, we have survived 100% of our bad days. And slowly but surely, we are coming back to life. 2020 has also taught us that we cannot control everything. No, cross that, we cannot control anything. And we can all make the plans we want to make, but at the end of the day, we got to leave it up to destiny. My guests today are both epitomes of destiny winning over plans. You have seen her in a whole variety of roles in Bollywood and South industry movies. She has created a niche for herself through a series of impressive, unconventional and standout roles in films. I have known her for a decades now and I cannot imagine she was on her road to being an engineer once upon a time. My second guest tonight is also a former pre-med student, but you know, he too decided to pursue theater and acting. He has been a household name in America with his fine performance in Heroes. He has consistently impressed his audience since then. And most recently, the young kids on the block cannot get enough of him after Mindy Kaling's Never Have I Ever. So excited to welcome almost engineer Tapsi Pannu and almost doctor Sendil Ramamurthy. Welcome them. Tapsi meet uh, Sendil, Sendil meet Tapsi. Hello. There you go. Hi, I've seen you on TV. <laughs> Thank you. I saw you in pink. Okay. <laughs> 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 That's nice. I love that you have seen each other's shows without a lot of uh, delay. I'm going to get into it because I have like postcards full of stuff that I want to ask you. I'm going to start off with uh, a first fun um, game. I see. I hope you had some coffee, Sendo. So this is called, this is a gibberish game. Okay, so you have to figure oh, out what it then is. I, then I got no problem. Fear off messing out. Fear off messing out. It's I don't close. know. Really, both of you give up? This is the lockdown edition. Fear off. Go Come on, away. Sandil, please. At least someone needs to answer this. Come on, Sandil. Fear off. Go. Okay. Go away. Um, this is gibberish. Mess. You're not you're supposed to try translating it or like uh, it's it's not like you have to know the meaning it of it. It sounds like. It sounds like. Fear off messing out. Fear of messing up. Fear of missing out. Ah, okay. Now I, I get the game. All right. Oh, I, I, okay. Finally. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, now I've got it. Okay. Uh, uh, Tapsi, you did a lot of this at home. Lockdown. I do a lot of lot. Uh, uh, ha, ha, oh. ha, what is her oh? Her oh, us, us. Is it us or us? <laughs> <laughs> who are you? Oh, I'm leaving from Indus. Huh? It's who are you? Cheers. House chores. Yeah! That's you get a point. Oh, see, I don't do any I of that. I am too good. <laughs> These are quarantine, um, quarantine words. It, it, it's not all over the place. It's very okay. specific too. Got it. Zu, zu, fai, sule, something. Zoo elf I zoo elf I zoo live. Zoo. Guys, I'm going ahead. Says isolation. isolation. <laughs> you know, there's a reason I didn't play all this of this on Instagram. This is the only way I can make myself look more smart. It's way too you early for this. One. Know, you only I live once. You, you only live once. You only live once. I said. I first. think I, I think Tatsi got that point. Oh uh, yeah. I, I, I'm going to be honest, I heard her say it and then just said it real quick. <laughs> That's, I, kudos I'm to being honest, Sandman. I'm, <laughs> I'm, very, I'm very competitive. Sun eat Sanitizer. Sanitizer. Yay! I knew that one. <laughs> I'm just, I'm, the I'm a few there steps go, behind. Rocks. <laughs> I wanted to start with a typical Desi question, okay? Yeah. So both of you uh, have you would have been the perfect Desi parents dream come true. You almost a doctor and you almost engineer. 
And, you know, how hard was it to first have that conversation with your parents? Uh, it was not fun. Uh, <laughs> really? Um, yeah, no, it was because uh, it because it kind of came out of the blue. You know, it came out of nowhere for because for you were like in pre-med, right? Yeah. I mean, I, I it's not like I had this, you know, huge love for for acting or drama or any of the performing arts. Uh, as really? Far as they Growing knew. up? Nothing. I, all, I, I played tennis. That's what I did. I was a, like a competitive <laughs> tennis player and that was kind of my focus. And, you know, acting, singing, dancing, any kind of performing, I just, I, I never did it. I never did it. I never did any of this stuff until uh, college. And wow. um, in college- Is that I, where the acting um, bug bit you? Yeah, and it didn't even buy me. And it, it was, it was. I had to take a, a arts uh, class to graduate. I had to have an arts credit to graduate from college. Mm -hmm. And I got to my uh, junior year, which is the third year of third university. Year. And my faculty advisor was like, um, "You need to take an arts credit like right away, or you're not going to graduate. Um, like, you need to do something." And so. I did intro to acting to to satisfy the arts credit. That's the only reason I took the class. And I almost never went to the class. Um, really? Yeah, I didn't, you know, it was a lot of the history of theater and the yeah. history of, uh, it wasn't a lot of performing, you know, it was an intro introductory acting class. It wasn't, you know, they weren't there to make you into Laurence Olivier. They were just no. kind of, <laughs> giving you a very basic, you know, sketch of what theater was. And yeah. so it was like the history of the proscenium arch and, and yeah. how yeah. stages were built. And it was just so boring. Um, mm. And so I just, you know, I didn't, I didn't really go to the class. Um, but uh, a portion of your grade was you had to audition for one of the the university productions, the, the play. You didn't have to get the part or anything. You just had to go do the audition and get the person to sign your paper saying you did the audition and then that covered what you needed for your class. Mm -hmm. um, and so I went and I auditioned for this play called Our Country's Good. I went there, I was hung over, didn't care. Um, <laughs> and those are the ones you get, right? Once you become an actor, <laughs> yeah, the ones you don't care about are the yes. ones you get, right? Yeah. Um, yes. And so I, d I did it and, and I got the part. And I, I told the director straight up, it was this British guy named Anthony Cornish. I said, I, do, I don't want to do this. I literally do, I'm doing this to graduate. I'm going to medical school and like, that's it. Just please sign my paper and let's get on with it. And wow. yeah. And he was like, he was like, I'll, I'll recast. He's like, you weren't that good. <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> I, can, I got, I got no problem finding somebody else, but this is college and you're supposed to try new things. So why don't you just give it a, give it a shot? And oh, wow. so amazingly, I, I, I listened and I did it. And from the first rehearsal, I thought it was the greatest thing I'd ever done. I loved oh, wow. every second of it. Um, wow. I, managed, I managed to squeeze in one more play uh, while I was at university, um, you know, uh, not with the same director, but that guy, Anthony Cornish, he said, you've got something. And you should uh, you should apply to drama school, and you should uh, you should go to the UK because there's people who look like you on on stage and on TV in the UK. And I didn't see anybody who looked like me on TV or in film in the US in or America on stage, or on yeah. stage or on um, stage, right? So he helped me with my auditions. I did um, uh, what did I do? I did Glengarry Glen Ross. Um, ah! and uh, Othello and wow. um, and then what I didn't know is you also had to sing a song and I just kind of like spaced on the song portion of the of the audition and I did the two pieces and they're like okay and your song and I was like <laughs> oh yeah my sign like I didn't want to act like I didn't know I was supposed to do a song and so the first song that popped into my head was every breath you take by the police ah! So I just started singing every breath you take. I was like, every line, breath you line. take, every move. They're like, okay, thank you. They stopped, oh, <laughs> they stopped me after like 
five words, they stopped me. And I was like, okay, so I'm not getting in to, to, to drama school, but I guess they saw something and they, they let me in. Wow. And yeah. then your parents were okay, that conversation? No, went- they were super not okay. And so I told them that I auditioned for this drama school and I, I've gotten in. And I didn't tell them. I, I you know, I took a, a Peter Pan bus from Boston to New York and I did the audition for drama school. They held the auditions at the United Nations building in, in New York, at the United Nations school mm-hmm, in New mm-hmm. York. And uh, I did it and then I didn't tell them until I got in. And then I told them, you know, I got in and I'm going. I'm going to London, like in four months. And I'm going to drama school. And it was really just kind of, it really oh, isn't like a ton this of This is how we raised you, my boy. You exactly, have such a exactly. future. Exactly. And it, this is like my senior year that I did this. This is like wow. three months before I was supposed to graduate. Um, I told them this. They were really upset. Um, and then amazingly, they kind of came around. They were like, okay, if this is what you really want to do, then you can give it a shot because you'll have regrets if you don't do it. Wow, um, and, that's nice. And we will pay for it. We'll pay for it. Because I was like, I'm going to have to like borrow money, like take out loans, whatever, to yeah. pay for the school. And they're like, and we'll pay for it. But the deal is, by the, if you haven't done anything by the time you're 30, if you're not kind of making a living and, and doing your thing, then you got to move on. You know, yeah. it's not a good look to be like a 50-year-old man trying to land Indian a, man mind you <laughs> exactly you know yeah. trying to land a Colgate commercial you know it's not <laughs> yeah it's not it's not a good thing yeah um and I so I said deal you know and uh, and so I went and I did it and they came to every like performance that I did they came to every play I did you know uh, almost solely theater for for years and years uh, yes after. yes and then I 30 before I knew it was coming up and I I was definitely not making enough money to support myself you know mm-hmm. um, and uh, I thought I guess this is it you know I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to find something new to do and then I I, I auditioned for heroes and um, it just kept going and going and going I kept auditioning I had to screen test five times and uh, and then I got it and that kind of changed everything. And that was when I was 30. Wow. Yeah. So I was That's ready to pack it in. Yeah. Wow. Topsy is not yet 30. Oh, she, she just turned 30. I, I know am. that. Yes. Ah, <laughs> you are. Okay. You are. You are. I so am you've 30. already accomplished a lot of stuff before 30. Yeah. You're way uh, ahead of the curve. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I my strongest line in my hand is the luck line. I guess I give a lot of credit to that as well. <laughs> okay. I think my story you know mostly. Uh, so it's more like it's for Sendhil and for everyone else who's listening. I know everything about you. Know, you know it. <laughs> I have to frame questions differently. Like uh, I can't cut through bypass. I have to start properly. Yeah, yeah. Topsy is my find. I introduced her into movies. Oh, wow. I'm her first producer. Yeah. Oh, very yeah. cool. Okay. Yeah. So there should be like certain perspective answers, which you should be giving and I should just be listening then. But no, no, <laughs> Because no. your perspective will be different from how I see things because we were on different sides of, on different sides of the table at that time. Yes. Uh, so yeah, I mean, my parents, I mean, it's very similar. Some things are very similar to Sandil. The fact that uh, I never, ever took part in any school play, drama skit nothing uh, not even in college i'm an engineer so i was like uh, i wanted to become an engineer i loved studying i loved maths i i loved my physics and um, i was only into dancing since i was a kid so i used to do stage performances in uh, indian classical dancing and that's what really i think got me to give those expressions and just be fearless in front of camera or people but never acting never uh, drama, never dialogues, never none of those. So when um, I was in college and uh, doing pretty well, and then suddenly I was like, I don't think I can work on, in a nine to five job every day for the rest of my life. So I think I need to do something different maybe, but now I'm in my second year of engineering and it I can't quit 
uh, that won't go down well with anyone. So I was <laughs> yeah. like, okay, let me just like do something on the side. And uh, I, uh, in second year, in, here in India, when you are in second year, you are uh, 18 years old and uh, you can start working side by side, right? So I, I got my portfolio click. I started doing modeling because in an engineering college, among 60 people in one class, there's only, there are only 10 girls. And even if you're average looking there, you're supposed to be the biggest diva. So everyone makes <laughs> you feel like you're the most beautiful looking girl because there are barely any girls in engineering. So, so everyone's like, oh, you look very pretty. You should get pictures clicked. Then maybe you can do modeling. So I'm like, oh, yeah, I think I look very pretty. Let's go and get pictures clicked. <laughs> so I got pictures clicked. And that's when uh, so I got my, a lot of, assignments for print photo shoots uh, soon immediately after I think the next day itself when I got my portfolio <laughs> did a lot of ads only for the sake of pocket money and just to keep doing something different and uh, by the time I finished my graduation I started getting calls from South to do a lot of Tamil and Telugu films and I was like I, I remember telling them on phone that I don't know how to act and I don't even know your language I don't know why you think I'll be capable of doing and they're like uh, no don't worry you come here we'll teach you I was like they look more confident about my acting skills than I am <laughs> so, so I was like let's jump into it and let's try because I saw an ad of yours I think it was a mixy grinder yes 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 it was blender a, a, Yes, yes. It was an ad uh, I did. I think because of those ads that people started seeing me around quite a lot. And then they, uh, then I started getting those calls. So I went down and I uh, went to Hyderabad. I met all of them there. They And I was like a sheep in the big city because I just, uh, I, I didn't even finish my graduation. I was in my final year ending days when I uh, was just uh, talking to everyone and I was about to give my exams and then immediately after my exams got over I, I went down and uh, got the pictures clicked in the look and uh, they gave me lines but I was terrible in uh, mouthing those lines because I had no idea how to deliver dialogues uh, but something clicked maybe I don't know you should ask them what and why did it click so well that they decided to pick this girl um, and then but but you know you were debut. Picked- you were picked by one of the top directors. You know, I had auditioned yes. for that film about 20, 25 girls. And there were girls that I really liked that I wanted to cast in the film. But something, there was something in you that, you know, K. Uh, Raghavendra Rao, who, pres- who brought Bahubali to us, you know. So there was something about you. I mean, even before we gave the yeah. Heroes ad out, we, we sent yours out. We really launched you and how. Like, it wasn't just, yeah. you know. What Tapasi is saying is, is true, though, in that you, you do have to have somebody believing in you, even if you maybe don't believe in yourself, especially yeah. when you're starting out. You know, you need somebody to take a chance on you, somebody yeah. who sees something that maybe you don't see in yourself. Yeah. And, yeah. and yeah. I think that's the key for anybody who's had any kind of success is, you know, you see something in this person and you say, OK, let's let's just take a shot. It's not that they see this person 100% is going to be a huge success. Like we never there's something know. there. Let's take a punt. Let's, let's, let's take a chance and see what happens. She didn't, she didn't have, she didn't know the difference between an eyeliner and mascara. Like she had no I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know the difference. You don't need to. But a girl. I, don't know, <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs>